the chateau was one of the more graceful fights, which sort of fitted the Merovingian in some way, given the nature of his character. This fight that I witness, uh, you know, took almost three weeks to complete. It was all choreographed on the floor. Then we did individual pieces on the floor up in the fight gym. Then they built the set. Then we had to rearrange the fight for the set. And then we had to rearrange the set for the fight. It went on for months. How about the lipstick you're still wearing? There's no lipstick. Lipstick? What do you mean lipstick? Is that on? <laughs> Here we go. This is the Merovingian chateau, and this is his foyer and what we call the Great Hall. Everything in this room is meant to break. <laughs> there is a, a perfecting of oneself as an actor that goes through certain knowledges like movement, fighting. And you can tell that Keanu um, enjoys very much that process. Oh man, oh, right, baby kung fu man. Oh, <laughs> this is where it gets fun. In this scene, uh, Neo is confronted by our Merovingian. And uh, we just auditioned a bunch of stuntmen and got the best guys we could find with the weapons to go against Keanu. Dave Leach, Usain Elam, Chen Hu, Marcus Young, and Brad Martin. We're going again for me. I'm gonna get it on this one. Is that better? I'm not gonna say all the stunt people were great actors. This particular thing was a lot of movement and it was perfect for them. There was no reason to put an actor in there. Is your fight in the chateau with mostly your, is it hand combat or? I've got a, a staff most of the time. The teamwork that is involved is, um, is fantastic to observe. Are you okay? Dude, see what you did. They all start off by shooting Keanu and using his will as the one. He stops all the bullets. Yeah, when you hit it, instead of catching with your fingertips, hit it with the palm of your hand. So you're up here, just go. That's it. Okay, here we go. Do you know your predecessors had much more respect? From there, we just kind of escalate once Keanu backflips up to the railing here. He comes back down, he arms himself with size. And if you look up into our rigging up here, we've got about 33 wires up there for approximately 27 different wire gags all within this one scene. <laughs> It's like theater, you, know, you have the people in the light doing the magic and you have the, the people in the darkness without whom it is impossible to achieve. No comment, no comment. This part is like more like a more traditional Chinese style, more love, more fly, which is the bladders one, the one that a lot of people fly in air. There, 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 there. The guys that are, the polers that are on the ropes are all martial artists that know the choreography and they know who the actors are and how much impact they can take. Tiger kills Marcus. He kills me. Marcus kills Usan. Marcus, you kill a lot of people, man. <laughs> okay, met Keanu with this one strike. That's all it took. I was finished. <laughs> Usan got the big ball and chain. Big special effects nerf one right in the side of the head. Do you want to thicken it up a little bit? It's a bit heavy. Yeah. Um, I've got some thick blood here. He's got a little thing on his cheek. Put some uh, spinach on your tooth there. You're a toothpick, man? <laughs> Could hardly feel it, huh? Yeah, barely felt it. <laughs> <laughs> All 17 times. <laughs> good just to do a bunch of fighting in camera and it's you know there is also like a sort of boyish charm like impaling people or smashing them through a statue or throwing them down the stairs or 
you know, pinning them to a wall or hitting them over the head with a, a shield. What I like in the Merovingian is that it's a certain vulgarity. I love the fact that he, lo he goes for things that are a little too decorative. His house, the chateau, is, is, is really over the top. I've always wanted to come and check the sets before to see how how much of a king he was, how how grand he was. We looked at all the the big palaces in Europe. Like actually most of this comes from the Hermitage. So it's over the top where they had lots of money to spend and just gild everything and make everything shiny and glisten. We have in our in our culture, in our French culture, we have the the uh, immediate memory of amazingly grand places like you know, Versailles or you know the, the, the king's castles. The, uh, I mean those images are very present to our minds all the time so that we can we can trigger them very easily. So this is the Merovingian Chateau upper hallway. The designing of this was um, lots of references to old chateaus in Europe looking at things like the Versailles Hall of Mirrors. Initially it didn't seem like it needed to be very large, but these are nine metres wide. It just kept on getting larger and larger in the detailing of all the mouldings and how we wanted it to look like marble. Also, we did research on the paintings that would look really good up on the walls and got clearances for these fantastic paintings and they're just huge colour photocopies that we then got our set finishing department to age down to look more realistic, those little tricks of the trade. So this is a set where there's a lot more weapons. It's going back to that idea of there being warriors in Merovingian. So it's filled with weapons that are from every country of every era. That's the idea that we're trying to push right through the chateau. The actual chateau that we're filming at for the front is in the Loire Valley and it doesn't really have a nice back door. So we had to create our own. They've taped on grout lines, it's a tape here to create all these grout lines and then they've got a slurry of plaster which they've pushed across and then probably another coat so that we can try and get this texture into it and they've pulled off the tape and then got in there with extra bits to try and make it look like it's much more aged. The flashiness of the places that he decides to surround himself with says a lot about who he is. The statues, you'll notice that they're all the same person, and those are all the images of the Merovingian. They're all his own likeness, so they're identical. So that's another sign of his egomaniacal control. No Venuses, you know, no Mars, it's all him. He has quite uh, strong, vulgar tastes, flash, you know, he likes everything that shines. He's, he's very much a Leo somehow, <laughs> which I am too. This mural is a symbol of the Matrix but in sort of a renaissance or medieval theme. This is medieval times, and there's the rest of us. This is all us humans on Earth battling it out. And then above that, we've got heaven with the angels. But the angels aren't really just angels. The angels are actually manipulating what's going on on Earth. And who's at the center of heaven? But Merv himself. So it's, it's all about him. Again, he's controlling everything that's going on in heaven and everything that's happening on Earth. So this is another analogy for the Matrix, where we all think that we're in control of what's going on here on Earth, but actually there's a whole other system in place where we're being manipulated. We looked at a lot of marble floors, a lot of floors, um, floors in Venice, and again, um, just throughout the classic palaces of Europe, because that's the imagery that we as Westerners, you know, that's where we, our heritage comes from, to think of those are the people who've been ruling us all this time. And that's what we're working on now, is designing a, a rubber floor so that the stunt guys can fall on that, but that it still looks like marble. So we're about to unroll um, the marble on top of the rubber. Or the, <laughs> the vinyl marble on top of the rubber on top of the wood marble. So do you want to just bring that one back so that it will line up with this line here? So no, I don't get too carried away because I'll, I'll center them up over there. 
And we've got to shoot it in sequence because as they go through and they damage everything, we can't really put it all back together. So it's going to be interesting to see what it looks like in the end. If I had imagined where he would be reigning, I would have, I would have completely agreed with the places that I have found. Don't look at me like a tiger. I was uh, eight years old. I was studying much like, uh, 20 years. <laughs> Almost like all my life. Crunching Tiger Hiding Dragon and Charlie Angels, a lot of movies, a lot of fun, especially Charlie Angels. Yeah, you work with the, with the three girls all the time, it's fun. <laughs> Tiger's on the first Matrix with us, and he's actually part of our wire team that puts us down and stuff. He doesn't do anything wrong. He's like the fastest, the strongest, the quickest. He jumps the highest. He's best in choreography. He's just you're the man, Tiger. You are the man. X. I just eat X. Number one. Number two. Have to eat this. <laughs> so I was training for weapons for like many, many years, over ten years. Stun life, most people it's a little hard. In Hollywood, stun is good job. <laughs> but not in Hong Kong. They have to shoot everything in slow motion just to see your moves. <laughs> Connect the oh, him <laughs> of the deck Very first shot is reaction. A punch and a fist. I just teach piano. Uh, we've been training together for like almost like two years. And I teach a lot of movie stuff. And piano is, is the one work the most harder. Want me to go lower? Uh, you can go lower with the sword. It's good. We have a good connection. We have six guys. Yeah, I'm the last one to die. Oh, the dialogue is... Ooh. For acting, it was like, if they want me, okay, acting, I do it, but I think it's for fun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a name. My name is Fighter 2. <laughs> Number one, Tiger Chen is the best martial artist stunt man on the planet. I love you. Did I tell you I love you? Yeah, I know. I love it. Yeah, we love each other. Yes. There's a lot of love around here. <laughs> a lot of love. love Cut. Surprise! <laughs> we made, I don't know, like hundreds of rubber weapons. And we just, like, had to keep on churning them out because every time someone would pick up a sword, they'd smash them. And all these things were molded, painted, they were quite complicated shapes. In Chinese, so we don't have those kind of weapons. So it's different, Chinese weapon and Western weapons. Most of these weapons I just found out of books and copied out of books, uh, out of medieval books and history books. These things actually placed exactly in accordance with the choreography of the fight. We make a lot of mistakes in this fight. We end up uh, killing each other. What we call Bottle brush with attitude. Commonly referred to as Tiger's toothpick. Neo uses this towards the end of the fight and sort of sticks it into some guy's head. The 
this is one of the first weapons to get broken. Brad actually leaps over the railing. Keanu kicks him right in the chest here, snaps the blade and knocks him out. Head gets bolted on this end. So so and so, and take the head off onto the next breakaway pole, and so on and so forth till they get the shot. One particular part of the fight, now if he grabs this particular sword, and this ends up going through uh, one of the bad guys who comes tumbling through this balustrade and hits the floor. Some swords don't quite go the distance, as you can see. This one here, that Brad wears, which they wear under their costume. I don't know if it was something I ate, but I got a huge stomachache. It's got to remain light, but yet still be fully retractable for Keanu to use. See, this one's actually gone through set, so it's getting a bit old. Action. <laughs> Three-pronged sword. Probably the, um, the most fixed weapon that I have. Fake rubber size that Marcus uses. These are um, genuine steel ones, which are what the other ones are moulded off. This is actually quite heavy, very dangerous. We take a copy of that, put a carbon fibre centre in it or a steel centre and um, a rubber mould, which the painters then do up and make it look beautiful. The soft shield's been surprisingly durable. Puts the shield in front of him. Hits him with the side through there. There's a plug that you would put back into it. The painters would touch it back up again, take it back onto set. The standard trident, which they used to fight with, all rubber tipped, so it can't hurt people too much. One of the boys gets stabbed. And this one, a rig like such, which is worn around the belly. We'll go onto it, pole goes on the end. Back to lying on ground dead. Take off the... <laughs> it's all the fake blood. Actually, the pipe it is actually really stuck good. in me. That's how we do it on the Matrix. Nothing, nothing. Same way for us. It's half-assed.